and start recording. Good morning. Happy Wednesday already. Middle of the week. Where does the time fly? Come on in. It's raining outside today. It's good for the garden. Ragnar and Eric were straight out and straight in again. <laughs> they don't like the cold weather, those two little Vikings. They should know better than that. Yeah, they're so lovely. They're so lovely. They are, oh, I said to Dave, there aren't even words to describe how, how, how much I, I, I just, there are no words to describe it. I just love them so much. It's great, you know, it's really lovely. It's been one of the highlights of, uh, of this lockdown is adopting those two little orphan cats, those two little precious Vikings. And I'm no big cat person, believe you me. I, I, I like cats, I like dogs, I like most things. I like all animals, but I, I'm not, you know, the, the cat man, the cat woman. I'm not, I'm not one of those, I'm not like that. But, but these two just have stolen my heart. There you go. Right, early to the party. Come on in, shut the door. Heating's on, kettle's on, milk's in the fridge. And today, I thought we'd finish those flowers and then we'd move on to some butterflies. Do you know, in the whole time, we, we did touch on the butterflies when we went down to the woods today, do you remember? But we really didn't, we didn't settle on the butterflies. And I thought they would be, they would be a wonderful, um, object of interest for us for a couple of days, you know, just to check the shapes out and the colour, especially because we're in this watercolour mode. I thought that'd be beautiful. So, so how do you feel about that? Doodling a couple of little butterflies, doing a string of butterflies. Yeah, there are lots, so much potential. You know, in, in our game, in, in the craft industry, butterflies and flowers, those are the two most popular objects of interest to stampers and groovy parchers, butterflies and flowers. And everything else, there's miles between butterflies and flowers. And then in our world, trees and landscapes, that's next, that comes next. But isn't it funny how we love butterflies and we love flowers. Come on in, you rock. Is anybody with me? I hope so. Paul's in the building with me as well and with you today. He's not in here, he's with you. So if you've got any questions or if you're looking for anything, shout. Well, just ask Paul. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Um, it's been a nice, relaxing couple of, uh, couple of sessions here, you know, with the flowers and the, it's been a gentle you know, I said to you, didn't I, at the beginning of this year with the lockdown and it's starting to grind, it's giving me backache, you know, and a headache. And, um, and I just, I said at the beginning of the year, we need to travel gently through this year because otherwise, um, I don't think it's going to go well, you know. And, uh, and so even the colours are gentle, you know, even the colours and the, and the objects delicate flowers and delicate butterflies, you know. And today it's not very nice out, so we're quite happy to stay in, in the shack shack. Welcome to the shack shack, safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. That's right. And we are a crafty lot, aren't we? Marion, I just saw you flash through. Uh, grüß dich Marion, schön, dass du auch da bist. So that's it, you see, we've got friends from all over the world. Marion is in Germany. I know that we've got Debbie in Texas. You know, it's lovely, isn't it? We've got Kathy in Canada. I like that the, this little shack shack of ours, this little, this little family, this community is, is spread all over the world. It's one of the best things to have come out of, of um, COVID, you know? Lots of good things have come out of it. It's not all, it's not all doom and gloom. Have you had your vaccine yet? I've had my first one. Felt a bit ropey last week, I can tell you. I did, I felt really dodgy. But I'm all right again now. Fighting fit, fighting for breath and fit to drop. <laughs> right, come on. Shall we get started and we can banter as we go? Let's have a cup of tea. I'm just letting you all settle in. Good, 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 good. Do you remember them? Cool, we need to make those into stamps. 
We really do. I know it's a little bit early for Christmas. Paul, write that down in your little jotter. Good. <laughs> the thing is, time flies. You know, things, it all happens so quickly. Before you know it, people will be making their Christmas cards. Don't, don't even go there. Right, let's have a look at where we were and what we're doing. Just a little recap and then you'll, you'll remember. So what we were on, we were looking at the postcards, weren't we? The lovely um, pop-it postcards, do you remember? And here they are. So we've got our whimsy poppets, our beautiful Marina Fedotova artwork, and like the Christmas ones, there's always there's six different designs, and there's one large one and one small one, and then, see, one little one, and then a larger one of the same one, and one we colour in and one we doodle, don't we? So that's what we've been doing. And um, these are really good price, actually, but they're lovely postcards. Have you been getting those fabulous postcards in, in your boxes when you've been um, ordering from us? We, we're just sending out nice postcards. Lucy and Lisa are creating these beautiful postcards. They're lovely. There's some really nice Mother's Day ones. and Don't say Mother's Day, it's just lots of love. And, but they're, they're, they're lovely, and they're just little random acts of kindness and generosity and the girls enjoy doing it and we enjoy sending them so I hope you're enjoying them um, but this is another you know if, if you coloured this one of these postcards in and sent it to a friend she would be made up I know and and the other thing about these is they're great for children because they they love colouring these in they're so delicate and yeah they're nice just gentle you know it's gentle is the operative word here isn't it so yeah, so that's what we, we, were, we were working with. That's our material. And then while we were learning how to get the shapes, oh, I know what we used. We used these stencils. I know it's a bit of a recap. Do you remember we were using the stencils um, to get the shapes, the circles and the, we're gonna use these again, believe you me. These are gonna be really handy when we move on to the next place that I want to take us to on our, on our travels with our Shack Shack bus. We're not going to go too far though. We won't need, an, we certainly won't need a passport. Right, but these are pretty cool, these basic shapes. And we used the heart one, didn't we? This one, to, to make our, um, our hearts in the background of the Polly Poppet. And then we learnt that. Don't throw that away because we're going to need those ones. And we were we were looking at um, different different ways to decorate, sort of abstract. You know, this is real arty stuff. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go back to that. But I thought while we were in this sort of, I got carried away with these colours. To be fair, and um, and then we went to, didn't we? Well, this is where we were on Monday. This is pretty, and we used. We just used a pencil, didn't we, to, to draw the three. If you, if you didn't catch this one, go to, the, um, go to our YouTube channel. And I think also, if Paul's not, Paul, you might be able to give the link on Clarity Worldwide. Every single session that we do here together is all recorded. So if anybody's new or they want to catch up, did you know this is 185 is it 185 hours, Paul? 185 hours. That's a lot of hours, isn't it? Hey, is it 185 hours? Golly! But the thing is, it's a it's a great um, it's a great catch up. You know, if you want to, if you if you're at home, then um, you can you can flick back. And on Monday, I showed you how to make these these pretty flowers. So let's just have a look up close so you can see what we got up to. You can see the pencil lines, it's quite transparent. And then we learned how to say it with words on the stems. And that's where we're going to go to now, just to finish this up. I thought we'd finish this one up and then we'd move on to some butterflies. What we also did with this one, do you remember when I said, well, if you're not sure about drawing freehand with these little, with the pencils, if you're not, sure about the freehand, then we were, we were able to use the, the hearts, weren't we, to make our flowers as well. So that one was using the hearts as well, just jiggled it a bit more. So they're very handy, those stencils, for sure. Right, so what we're gonna do now 
we've penciled this in. Do you remember? We drew it, just to recap, we drew it on a piece of tracing paper. We're going to need tracing paper today, guys, guys. We drew it on a piece of tracing paper, didn't we? Then we turned it over and we, tra and we drew it backwards and then we flipped it back and we transferred the print so that it ended up on our card. And this is Clarity Stencil Card, isn't it? Int it. Yeah, I'm always using Clarity Stencil Card. So what we're going to do now, if you're up for it, we're going to write the stems with black pen. So we've got, get a bit of copy paper, just get a piece of copy paper, because you're going to practice first, get your eye in. Okay, and then let's decide, are we going to use, these are pretty cool, these pens. Um, are we going to use a really fine one or an 05? I'm going to decide. Look at the state of my hands, look inky. I'll show you later. I've been, I've been playing, I've been playing with something really fabulous. You know, when, when we come up with something new, I have to put it through its paces, make sure that it's exactly what we need. And then I bounce backwards and forwards with Lucy or Lisa. And today it was Lisa's turn. It's fabulous. Let's get started and then I'll show you what we're on. So I need my good glasses on. Everybody following me? Everybody happy? Let's have a look. And, uh, and then we're going to write this along here. Happy birthday, D, because it's lovely D's birthday on Monday. Actually, with that in mind, I will tell you now, because I was going to do the Shack Shack on Monday and then go and see D, but she lives about two hours away from me. So I thought, do you know what? With your permission, I'm not going to do the Shack on Monday. I'm going to set off D if you're watching. I'll be there early. I've already got the cake. But I thought I'd go and spend the day with Dee, my friend, because I haven't seen her for a very long time. And we're going to go for a long walk. She lives near the beach. Yeah. So I won't be here on Monday at 10 o'clock, but I will be here again on Wednesday. Yeah. And this is Dee's birthday card. <laughs> right. I just thought, you know, for the sake of an hour of doodling, I'm sure my other friends in the Shack Shack will understand if I if I want to go and see D for a little bit longer. Otherwise I won't get there till two. It's rubbish. Then I've got all the way back again. And um, yeah, so I just thought I'll make a day of it with her. I'm sure she will appreciate that too. That's a bit of a ropey looking leaf grey. So we're gonna focus, focus. Right, there we go. Right, I'll get my eye in. If you go too fast, if you go too fast, let me show you what happens. It gets scratchy. So if you go slowly, right, you don't take your eye off the, you don't take the pen off the paper. And if you do stop, right, then you'll make a mark. So you just travel slowly and gently, right. Uh, and then don't go too fast and the pen will keep going. It will keep traveling with you. If you press too hard, you'll get scratchy. If you go too fast, you'll get, you'll get that. Sometimes we like that look, but for this, I really want it to be proper. That's an 01. See what I think of the, do I like, it's the much of a muchness. I'm gonna go with the 01, so it's not too thin. All right, have you got your eye in? Get your eye in so you can see what you're doing. Right, get your pen ready. If your pen's a bit crusty or the nib's a bit shot, it's not broken, all you want to do is take your nib and twizzle, twizzle the pen just lightly. The number of pens I've salvaged at workshops just by suggesting that people twizzle the nib. They're quite robust, these Micron pens. They come in a pack of about seven of them, different sizes. Right, here we go. So I'm going to go uh, air writing first, as you know. How many P's in happy? <laughs> I'm going to go over the top with my head. So I'm going to write it. There you go. I'm going to do it like this so I can get in over the top. Right. Gently does it. I, I'm not going to talk now. Right, there we go. And then we're going to come through here like that. Over we go. Gently. Two P's. Round we go. 
gently does it and up to the top. Good enough for me. Happy, now birthday. Right. See, it's all about the focus, isn't it? It's all about the focus. I'll come back for the D, for the T. And there's the T, and there's the R. Right, and then I, I, um, you know, I think that the the whole doodling process is so healthy for the head. There, isn't that pretty? So we've done our three words. Happy birthday. Put my, and then I'll let the ink dry. I'm not going to go and rub out now. So we can be working on on our butterflies while while the ink's drying nicely. There's no rush. The other thing I wanted to do was at the top just make a little tiny black V when it gets to the top of the flower. Like that, so that it becomes part of the, it's holding the flower. Uh -huh. Now, if you want to add a bit more colour, I'm easy with this, I'm good with this, I think this is just perfect, right? If you want to add a bit more colour, do it now before you get, do what I'm going to do next. And then, and also, can I say that if you want to add colour, it doesn't have to be wet, you can add, you can add a little bit of depth or a little bit of detail with a dry pencil too. You could add veins if you wanted. I would certainly recommend that you sharpen that pencil though before you do that. And then you go in really, really lightly. But we're going to do that on the butterfly anyway, so. Right, and then let's have a look. Let's just do it on here so that we know what we're doing. Just random little dots like that. Just a little cluster of dots. You can barely see them. I know, I know, I'll come in tighter in a minute. And we're just going to make a little group of dots like that. No, not too many, just around the top. Just gives it a bit of shade. There, look, beautiful. Just makes a connection, you see, between the black stalk, stem, if you like, and the flowers. There, isn't that pretty? Little things. Little things, please, little minds. There you go, let's go up closer. You can see what I'd got up to there. See? And then when all that's dry, when that's all dry, and set, then I'll go with my rubber, a rubber, and I'll rub out the, the, the pencil lines, the guidelines and what have you. Right, come on. Sip of tea first. And then, look at the state of my hair, look. Honestly, I'm turning into Rapunzel up here. <laughs> I'm gonna start letting my hair out the garage window. Help, help! <laughs> I wonder who crawl up it. Anyway, if it's that irritating neighbour, <laughs> we're going to fall out. I'd cut him loose. <laughs> right, come on, Barbara, stop larking about. I'm going to leave that to dry. Put it to one side. So we learnt how to do that. We learnt how to do that. We're going to finish that off. Put a nice edge around it. We could do all that. Next, uh, next stop, butterflies. Are you up for this? All right, need a bit of copy paper. Need a pencil. I mean, that's one of the things about the Shack Shack. You can get all the gear if you want to, but you don't have to. You can join in with a pencil and a piece of paper. Okay? Just always hold that thought. Never feel excluded because you haven't got all the gear or you can't afford it. I've got a company. I've got a craft company. I've got loads of stash. But it doesn't mean you have to have it all. Okay? Only if you want it. Right, tracing paper. Have you got some tracing paper? Let's get a piece of tracing paper. There we are. I would hate to think that somebody couldn't join in because they didn't have the gear, you know? And that's why, ultimately, of course I've got, I've got warehouses, got factories full of stuff, but in the end, when you bring it right down to basics, if you've got a pencil and a piece of paper, you can, you can enjoy the mindful process, the being in the now, you know. 
That's the key, isn't it? Butterflies. So I thought today we'd focus on the shape of the butterflies and then on Friday we'll move into the colour. How's that sound? Yeah? So for example, I'll show you what I did so that you can see where we're headed. I Because we're using tracing paper, I, I've only done half a butterfly because they're very symmetrical, those butterflies. So I thought if we could just master half of it, then we can, you know, our old trick with the tracing paper, right? So for example, we've got half a butterfly here, half a butterfly here and half a butterfly. I just drew, I sketched three different shapes. Butterflies are such beautiful, beautiful flying insects, aren't they? Have you been see? have you been watching that, um, the Earth in Colour or Attenborough's programme on a Sunday night. Ah, the butterflies. It's fascinating. They actually aren't that... It's the light reflecting off the thousands of scales on their wings that give them the colour. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. But it's the shapes that we're going to concentrate on today. Okay, you up for that? Pencil, tracing paper. Uh, you might want a ruler just to get the line down the middle. And we'll, we'll give a go. We'll have a go at three different butterfly shapes. So let's take a bit of tracing paper and let's just make a line first. Where's my ruler gone? Any ruler will do. Right, and what we'll do is we'll just make a line down here, like that, leaving enough side for both, both halves of the butterfly. So we're going to fold it over. Then we'll put another one over here. That'll do. So we can do a few different ones. Right, so that's going to be our line. Thing is, see what I thought was, we can, we can draw it on the straight, right? Because that helps with the folding and the symmetry. But of course, when we transfer our butterflies to our artwork, then we'll turn it and we'll turn it. And you know, I've never seen a butterfly flying at me, you know. <laughs> You know, but let's get the let's get the symmetry right. Agreed. So the first butterfly I wanted to try, I thought we'd try a large one, right? These are lovely, and and then what we'll do is once we've got the shape right, then we can transfer it, and then we'll add the colour. And you know, there are some phenomenally colourful butterflies, you know, but I thought we could we could focus on the delicate rather than go in with bright colours, which, you know, we could do that as well. But I thought this week it would be lovely to capture the translucency of the wings and, you know, it's easier as well. Well, no, that's not true. It, I love it. I love it. Gentle, gentle. Okay. So let's have a look. If we start with the body, that's the best place to start. Are we, are we in close enough? I could come in a little bit closer. Let's have a look while we're sketching. How's that? You probably want to know, I mean, this is a big butterfly. Hey, man. But I thought I started big, it just happened that way. I didn't do it deliberately. The body's about, I don't know, a centimeter, one and a half centimeters. That's where we're going to start. And then if you look, right, let's turn it around to the one, Barbara, right? If you just, just to get your bearings, it's about four and a half, so it's three times right? Taller where the wing is, if you see what I mean. And what I found was when I was sketching the butterflies, they, it's weird. It, it's, I've, I've noticed this before. It's like when you're drawing a Christmas tree, let me tell you this, when you're drawing a Christmas tree, a Christmas tree always looks nicer or easier on the eye when you give it a tall tip. It just does much more so than if you give it a flat, you know, like that. It always looks more appealing if it's tall. And the butterflies look more attractive to us when the top wings are bigger than flat across. It looks more like a moth. And I like moths, don't get me wrong, moths are beautiful. I'm not, you know, I'm not comparing between moths and butterflies, but um, the butterfly looks more elegant and pretty and delicate if the top wings are right, much, much higher than the head. Just saying. 
saying keep your eye on that so when we look here you can see there's the body there's the top of the back there's the top of the wing there's the body look how, how much higher up the wing is there's the body see so it's not here is what I'm saying it's much taller same with the trees in at Christmas so let's have a look if we bring in the body first right you ready oh, do you know I fancy a cup of tea first all right so let's let's say we're gonna we're only gonna do one here so we'll do the body now the body if you like do it like that look it's just like a little diamond really call it a little diamond but then it's got eyes there let's call it eyes it's got it's got the body has got three parts as well so it's got a head a body and a tail right so so, so think about that All right but for the time being let's just assume it's got a pair of eyes it's got a head a body and a, and the bottom bit and and so the 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 wings are going to come out of this is really key the wings are not coming out of the head because that would be really uncomfortable for the butterfly <laughs> okay they're coming out from the body the torso bit and the wings are not on the bottom part either because that would be really difficult to steer okay so it's the middle section where the wings are actually attached okay it helps with the drawing it does it so does right so so if you've got a one a two and a three bit right then you've got your your antennae as well okay or your aerials or whatever you want to call them they're called antennae i remember being on tv i can't remember which which presenter it was they kept calling them aerials it was so funny so the aerials you can make them go outwards or you can make them go inwards whichever you prefer right right got head got eyes big eyes now let's get up to here and what we're going to do is we're going to come up it, they're all going to be different they're definitely all going to do you know that there are over 20,000 butterfly species let's come up like that and then and then what I'll do is I'll sweep round and I'll probably come round like that there you go so it's like an arc see here like that see but it's taller on the top than it is on the bottom two thirds a third so we go up like that do it gently and it's got four wings one two three four so then this bit let's do it now we've done the bottom bit as well so we're coming around like that okay and then from the middle just come out just cut across I think when you deconstruct it like this it helps a lot and then just come through like that okay don't get too hung up on it and then this it comes in about here look it's not miles it, they don't come right into here and then out again that's a sort of a I bet there is a butterfly that goes right in and goes out again but not this one okay let's try and do this so rather than do go like that and like that which is very stylized isn't it let's assume that the butterfly's wing is coming round like that and it's actually coming like that if, if it were overlapping it would be coming in like that you see so that would be a flying machine wouldn't it so if it were overlapped which it is this is what it would do think it through so this one for example it'd come round and it's going to see doesn't that make sense it's got to be logical and if it's logical when you draw it it would be logical when you look at it so now here for example this one it could have a little bit of a a shape in it as well see so it goes up like that and down and then it's got a little bit of a it's nice to draw and it's nice to see now this one if you wanted this wing to be deeper you could bring another bring another little bit more look no problem it's your butterfly see and then you could take this out I'm just showing you the logic see and then when you take this away although butterflies are in effect transparent but but for the sake of our drawing today they're going to be like that but you can see what I'm getting at see it's very easy and it's different it's just fatter than that one but listen if there's 20,000 of them I'm sure see this one's a bit different it's a bit wider a bit came out a bit further this one's taller it is everyone's is going to be different so don't sweat it 
And then that's going to be the, here we are. The trick is to like what you're doing. If you like it, then it's worth f folding over and carrying on. This is the point at which you go, mm, do you know what? I want to make it thinner. Because now, if I wanted to, I could bring it in a bit more. Yeah? But, I, you know, I'm not going to get caught up. I could spend all day doing this, and I probably will. But I just wanted to explain, in, in effect, that the tall, the, the, the butterfly is a lot taller. It's like two thirds a third. And then bring it round as a little arch. Think about it from a practical point of view. It's attached to the body. Not to the head, or the, that would be very uncomfortable for this little fella. Right. Like that. Right, so I've got mine. I'm happy with that. That'll do. And that's going to go like that, and that's going to come around like that. There you go. I've thinned it out a little bit on that side. So that's coming a little bit too close to the head. Won't be able to see anything. That's better. Attach it to the body. Give the head a bit of breathing. A bit of personal space. Nice, that'll do. Right, that's the first one. Have you got yours? Are you doing all right? Right, that's that one. That'll do. Okay, next one. This is a different one. See, this one was round, like that. This one's a bit more triangular, isn't it? See, it's a little bit more edgy. Comes up to a tip. And they do. I mean, I spent an hour this morning, two hours this morning, staring at butterflies. And there are so many beautiful different shapes. I mean, sometimes they, you can't encourage them. It's very difficult to encourage butterflies into the garden, I think. But you can certainly, when you see them, doesn't it, doesn't, isn't it uplifting that you find, oh, spring is in the air. When you see butterflies, it's like, it's a delightful thing, isn't it? It's like a libelli, like a dragonfly, you know, or a damselfly. Always lovely to see them as well, you know. Uh, so this one now, let's try and get a bit smaller. So what we're doing now is we're just bringing the, I found by making the body smaller, it automatically helped me make the butterfly smaller. And I'm stating the obvious, but there you go. It's my job. So this time what we'll do is, I'll leave it up there so you can see it and I can see it too. But we'll, we'll, we're going to do two butterflies, so you've got to give yourself a bit of space. And we'll just make a smaller body. Let's make a smaller body. That's it. The head's in there as well. And, and I'm going to make the antenna go that way this time. That'll do. Right. Now, have I given myself enough room? Yeah, of course I have. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge butterfly again. See? So if, if I come in there like that, this time... I'm going out more, but check it out. So it's, it's, it's a sweep like that, and then it's a triangle going that way. One, two. So if you, if you put it this way, and you, you were doing it this way, you can see exactly what's happening, right? Let's try it. See if it makes more sense. If we, if we bring it in like that, right? And then it comes up, and we'll bring it around the other side as well. So it goes up and then down. I might even bring it over a little bit, like that. So rather than so tall this time, we're going that way and then that way. See how far out I am from my original. Not bad at all. That'll do. So we're going to, again, it's on the body, not on the legs, right? It's on the body. So it's attached to the body. So you're going to go like that and then slight curve. So they've definitely got a curve on them, haven't they? Right? See? Like that. That'll do. It's a bit bigger at the bottom than it needs to be, but hey-ho, it's a different species. <laughs> right? The first... Oh, come on, Gray, get it right. This is where you've got a chance to change it. I'm going to bring it in, and I'm going to bring it in like that, a little bit shorter, because I want to make that... I don't think I've actually ever seen a butterfly in the wild that has that little tit hanging on the bottom but they are lovely aren't they when when don't you wish that they were floating around in your garden right there's a um yeah i was looking up like facts about butterflies so this time let's just have a look here because what we want to do now is this is this hasn't got three wings it's still got two so this is one like that one and then two got it 
So this is the, the first wing. Top wing's always a bit taller, isn't it? A bit bigger. So back into the centre again, like that. And we're going to make a triangle. So it comes out to there, and then it goes up like that. That'll do. There you go. It's like a triangle. And then this one, if you overlapped it, it would come out like that, and it would come round like that. See, if you overlapped it. When you overlap them, they make more sense. Does that make... Is this okay? Can you hear me all right, Paul? Am I... Am I just wittering away to myself here? <laughs> now, where's my rubber? Where's the most... The biggest selling thing that we've got in the cupboard? The Farmer Castelli razor. Uh, there you go. But you see what I mean? Now, it makes sense. And if you wanted to give it one of those little... Yeah, come on. This is art. It doesn't have to be an English butterfly, does it? It's going to be a butterfly somewhere, right? Then we can take that one out there, see? And then that big... So that's going to be like that. And then that's going to, you'll see it when we draw it, we'll put a little bit more, you know, like two generations, whatever colour this is, if this is a light green butterfly, then we'll put a, we'll make it clear that you can see this wing behind that one, but we'll do that with the colour. That's what I'm getting at, see? And then this one is going to come round like that. We have that little, it's got to have a special name. It's certainly not called a tit. <laughs> a teat. Right, like that there it's going to be pretty and now if you want to sharpen it a bit and make it look see rather than round if you wanted to get a bit more of an angle going here now's your chance look, have a look so you can go up and then around as in you can give it more of a more of a jagged t that's it it's going to be lovely and then we'll sort out the, we've got to get the shape, the outline's the first thing, right? So that's that one. Happy with that? I like that one. So I've got that one, I've got that one, and now we're doing the third one. So this one, let's have a look from this side and you'll see the difference. This is a bit more of a triangle, wasn't it? Un de trois. This one is um, circular. This has definitely got the old arch going here. This is probably more like what we see in the garden. That's what I think. Mm, if you wanted to, you can make it a bit taller bit higher at the top and a bit lower at the bottom. You can move the body, couldn't you? Just move the body down. That's probably easier. <laughs> so if that's that, then I could put the body down here. Just move the body down. There's the head. There's the body. Right. There, yeah, that definitely works. There you go. Change the aerials, the antenna. There. There you go. Right, so... That's the shape we're going for this time, yeah? So get your body in again. Add your little body. Just put it in lightly. You can always change it. Right, little triangle thing on the line. Right, and then we're going to come in here. That's the head. Leave the head alone, Barbara. Right, body like that. Now we're going to come in, come in round, the round. Okay, so I'm going to actually do it on the side because I find this helps. So we're going to come in a little bit on that side, a little sketchy, air drawing, and then we'll come round like that. Let's have a look. Round like that. See? So there's your body. There's your butterfly. And then halfway along like that, it will literally split in half. It's easier to do like this if you break it down. So you come like that, and then this butterfly, I think, will go like that. Just down and then just give it a little swizzle. Traditional. Trad butterfly. Right? And then this one, we're just going to bring it round. But it won't come out further. The bottom bit doesn't come out further than the top bit. That would look too weird. Just pencil it in and see. Have a look. Perfect. See? So that one's coming that way and that one's coming that way if you want to overline them. Isn't that lovely? There you go. That was an easy one. See, so it's all about this angle. If you want a triangle, triangle, circle, and then the big cheese, which is similar to this, but then instead of making this round like I have here, like that, which is nice, here we've made more of a fantail. 
It's all about the colouring in then. And where they overlap, which is why we want to think about the overlap, where they overlap, we'll do that with colour on Friday, see? It's cool, eh? Right, stretch your necks, people. Does it make your neck ache? It makes my neck ache. Let's give a couple, let's give our friends a couple of moments to catch up with us and then we'll, then we'll do the, the flipping trick, as in the reflection trick. What a perfect word, reflection. Right, I've got some things I want to talk to you about, a couple of things, because you know we do the moments of clarity. You know when we do the, um, where we go to the shows, where I put the backdrop last time, that fateful Friday afternoon where I nearly keeled over. Remember that one with the, when we went to Holland and I nearly never made it back. <laughs> it's all right, I'm fine now. Um, the next moment of clarity, because this is where you craft along with me. So that's why I have to tell you what we're doing so that if you want to craft along with me, you can get the gear now, because this is where you do, you do need some stash. There are certain things. Anyway, this morning I've been working on the finishing touches of these new masks with uh, Lisa. Brilliant. I'll show you. Landscape masks. Now, Let's do, let me just show you what we're going to do and what we're going to use. I've got to do this because many of you, it's all on the website already, many of you will want to know how to do this. It's so easy and it's so lovely. The results are spectacular and it, it doesn't, it's not that hard. It's just a thinking game, right? So usually, let's see if you, you know these. Remember when we use these masks and this is the set, this will be on the show as well. So, for example, the clouds, the moons, we're going to use those. We've got the hills. Um, then we've got the, um, the rooftops These are the, and the castle, right? So if you look at that castle, for example, that mask there, this is, this is a nice piece of artwork using the castle mask and using, this is old, I did this years ago, and the, this one is using the, the rooftop, see, together because they're in the same pack, happy days. Right, now, a year or so ago, we did the next, we, we put together another set, which is phenomenal, right, with trees, and then we got the deer in this one, and then the children playing the meadow dance, and then we added the six big, because we keep going through the same moons, don't we? Now, let's have a look at the artwork that you can get from this. This is gorgeous. So you can see the size of these. See that little mask there? This is the actual size. So I want to show you how to do that. These are available also at a great price. Let me show you the, the deer. Right, this is using one of the backdrop stamps. This is cool stuff, okay? This is, for me, you know, like everybody has their, their place where they, where they feel like they're putting on a really comfortable pair of slippers. This is my comfortable pair of slippers. I love this. Um, and so Lisa and I, we were talking about this, about masks, because you see, I've always maintained hour for hour and pound for pound, the mileage that you get out of the masks is fantastic. I mean, I know that we make the masks for the stamps, you know, and they save a lot of work. We know that. And I also, we, we also sell the, the blank mask material. That's all useful for stampers, yeah? But this is just so easy to do. Let me just, let me just show you. If I pan out, a come out a little bit, come out a little bit so you can see better. That's it. So, so next Friday, not this coming Friday, the Friday after, at three o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to be having a session on how to use these masks. So, so we're going to use all three. We're going to use that set. We're going to use this set, right? So if you've got them, get them out, right? And now for the best, right? We were talking about reflections and I said, because again, it's about the reflection on the butterfly as well, you know, transferring. And I said to Lisa, wouldn't it be great if we could have some landscapes? Because you see it all the time on the telly, you know, where the trees are above the water and then, you know, or, or reflections that way. So reversing. But the thing is with the masks, it doesn't work like that unless it's symmetrical. 
unless you've got someone like Lisa in the building. So what she did, let me show you this. If I show you, where are they? Right, here they are. Let me show you the prototypes, because this is what I was working on this morning. If I show you what we're talking about, because I said to her, in the end, we cannot do reflections unless we've actually got mask reflections. So what we've done is we've compiled a collection. These are superb, right? And you don't have to, the, 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 you can buy them together or you can buy them separate. But you see, so you've got the, the landscape, you've got the riverside landscape mask with the trees like this, and then you've got the reflection. And this is a clever little addition as well, this bit. I'll show you in a minute. When I, I, I put one through its paces this morning. Right, so you've got that one. You've got the landscape, then you've got the river, mountains. So you've got mountains, right? Two different sets of mountains, but then you've got the reflection. Look, see? It's important that you have the reflection on another sheet. We tried all sorts of different things. Now we've got these fantastic, look at the flowers here, the riverside bank, right, with the tall poplar trees. And then we've got the reflection. I can't tell you how phenomenal this is when you start using it. This one, this is a riverside view. And what's cool is, right, absence of animals, absence of people, this is pure landscape, riverside view, reflection. You can see they're the opposite, aren't they? Or, I do it, if I do that way, see, reflection. That's the, that is the key to me. And then we've got pine trees, and again, reflection. Okay, now comes the cool bit. So this is, this was, um, this is Lisa's idea. You see, all the extras. So you've got the deer, you've got the, the moon, you've got the people, you've got the children, the ducks, the birds. But if you were doing a water reflection, you, you've got the opposites as well. Otherwise you can't do this. So now I've shown you, these are the prototypes, right? So there's basically, for every sheet, for every landscape, there's its reflection. We tried to do them on, on one sheet, but it was too tight. It was really, like, it got confusing. I said, you know what? Split them up. They're worth, they're worth it. And you can use them individually or you can use them together. You know, they're so cool. And let me show you an example. This is just what I did, just to, just to put it through its paces. And you'll see now how I did this. So this is what I want to do with you on... Um, Next Friday, on the, in, the, in the moment of clarity, I want to show you how this works. So, for example, and this is the key, because you'll notice, you'll say, well, hang on a minute, where's the deer in this? There were, there were no deer here, right? And the, here's, the, here's the best part. When you look at these, let me lift this off to show you. This here, I could put those deer now, that mask, anywhere I like. Look, so I could put it there, which is what I did. I could put it there. I could put loads of them in a row. I could put, you know, I could put this outside piece. You see, look, here's a little single one like that. And then where the feet are, you just look. So I could put that there like that. And then I just dab the color in. And then, right, so that's that and that's that, right? And once I've done above the water, the best part of it is, of course, we've got the opposite. We've got the reflection. So then I take the reflection one. How could you do it otherwise? And you just line it up and put it down where it's going to be. And then you add a little bit of lighter color to it. Abs absolutely groundbreaking stuff this is. Like game changer, game changer, you know. And I put it, to, I put it through its paces on white, um, on white stencil card, on the large white stencil card, because white is, it, I won't say it's unforgiving, but it's unforgiving. It shows me exactly, exactly um, what, what I've got, right? Um, and when you put it on, when you put it on designer paper, it's more, it's just instant background, isn't it? So what I want to do is go to white card and to design a paper on In The Moment Of Clarity. So if you want to join in with me, Paul will give you the link. 
because we it's Wednesday today so we've got right till next Friday to get the gear to you right that's that's the best part of it so let me just put that there and then I, I thought if you want to join in just tick these boxes so you know what you need I made a little list for you first of all you need you're gonna need brushes brushes right so if you've got stencil brushes you, you need a set of brushes you don't need loads of stash to make phenomenal art with the masks you just need a few little ingredients one is the brushes for sure right the next thing is large stencil card right so these are the brushes they come in a set of four okay then the next thing is the large stencil card you know the stencil card that we were cutting up into three and a half inch bo these lovely little squares brilliant right with these landscapes we're going large aren't we so we need this stencil card right you need large pieces of stencil card um, to enjoy I mean that's the thing about the mask so you don't need to use all of it you know like that one that I just did I could chop that up into three different cut you don't have to use all of it but it, it when you're making it right make it in one piece and then chop it into three sections that's, that's how I would do it anyway. so so that's the stencil card and then the other thing that I had on my list is makeup sponges, right? So there's about 500,000 makeup sponges on the water, somewhere between here and China. The spot on sponges, they are coming, they're just not here yet. In the meantime, go on Amazon or somewhere, just buy yourself a bunch of cheap makeup sponges because they are great. These tree landscapes, remember I said butterflies, flowers and trees. These masks, they're, they're very delicate and so it's often better instead of brushing through which we will do with the landscape it's better to pounce and you can do that much better with a makeup sponge right and then you need your artistry inks so when i say artistry inks i'm talking about these boxes friends you know these boxes that's the by far and away the cheapest way to go is to get yourself a box of these or two or three or four whatever you fancy right artistry inks die basic you could also use, if you've got ink pads, you could use Adirondacks, you could use Distress inks, anything that's a water-based, a dye-based ink. You could use the, the oxides, but they're quite, um, you can't get a lot of real sh shade with them. I would, I would say they're a bit chalky for this job. That's just my opinion. Right, and then the last thing, what else have I got on my list here? Designer paper designer paper right exactly so I had a look at the designer papers and I thought to myself um, these would be the two that I would run to right so these ones here this one look here we go let me show you that see that there that there right that one there look behind my head hang on no other way see behind my head see the picture that's using that artwork uh, see and that's using the mask from the um the rooftops lovely isn't it so if you're gonna treat yourself to a set of designer papers a book these are the two that i would say are brilliant for the landscapes same as like the girls you know the the beautiful girls the children that one that's lovely isn't it and i'm pretty certain if i'm not mistaken that one comes from is it amazonia i think it comes from amazonia or is it this one amazonia it's amazonia i bet it is there it is look see Ta -da! there see the line on it brilliant yeah it's got to be that one i, I reckon Or is it that one? God, that looks more like it. Yeah, there it is. Look, it's that one. Cool. Superb, isn't it? Found it. Ah. See? And you think, why did she do the background? Well, she didn't. She bought <laughs> She did. She designed it to start with. But anyway, those are the two, okay? So that's a really great way of working. And what else did I have on my list? Black Archive Link Pad, I bet. Black Archive Link Pad, you need one of those to get the solid look. Silhouette, beautiful, right? So you need that. 
Um, yeah, that's for the brushes, that kind of thing. And then a blending mat. And when I say blending mat, I just mean this. So that if we wanted to make two colours together, like we don't want ocean reef and we don't want mellow green, we want a kind of a tealy colour, we might go and then mix them both together, okay? So a blending mat's great for that. And you can use your brush to blend the two colours together. So you put the green and the purple and then you go like that and then you've got a new colour. Blending mat's always well worth having. You know, if you're new to clarity, you, you, you know, I know that we've got a huge website full of gear. I know that, I've been going for nearly 30 years. But um, if you follow me, I don't use that much. I, I've always got the brushes, the black ink pad, the, you know, it's always the same bit of makeup, low tech, masking tape, it's always the same gear. It's like I could put it all in a box, in a little box, what I use. And, um, and, I, and that's, an, that's an okay thing, right? So that was what I wanted to tell you about. If you want to join in, go for it because those reflection masks i spoke to lisa we can only make about six sets and if the if the machine runs successfully through the night we can make six complete sets i said crikey she said it's all right i'm on it i said well you better be because i need more than six sets she said well you know it it, it will work it'll be fine it just take a little time good things take time it's the detail on the mask the cutting out is massive Right, so I wanted to tell you about that. I wanted to tell you about that. And while we're, let's do the reflection while we're talking about the other things. Which one am I gonna go with? That's my, right. So that's, it was the word reflection that triggered me there. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I needed to tell you all those things. Next thing, we're gonna reflect this half. So we're gonna fold, let's do this now. And then I'll tell you about a couple of other little things. Right, there you go. Bang down the middle, yeah? So I've got the flower, I've got it there. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna draw the other half of the butterfly on that side. Yeah, so we're gonna draw the other half of the butterfly on this side of the tracing paper. And there you go. And then that's gonna be that overlap bit when we do the watercolor. Gonna be lovely. Right. And then we'll do a little bit, give a bit of a wiggle along there. That's it. And then bring that round like that. About the same, isn't it? Then we've got the body's already done. We just wanted the so when you open it up, voila! We have a symmetrical butterfly. There you are. Cool. Let's try this one next. It can't be five to eleven already, Paul. It isn't, is it? Good grief. Okay. Right, keep going. Yeah, butterflies, magnificent, aren't they? The largest butterfly is the giant swallowtail. I'm going to tell you some bits and pieces now. The largest butterfly is the giant swallowtail, which is, wait for it, I'm going to show you, right? Their wingspan is between four. So this would be a little rinky-dink one, right? This could be the size of the butterfly landing, landing on you. Between four inches and seven inches. So that is a seven inch span. And that's the size of the giant swallowtail. Cool, you'd know that if it landed on you. And did you know that they don't actually eat butterflies, they drink for a start, and they taste with their feet. So when they land on you, they're actually just hungry. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? I remember when we used to live in Pacific Grove, there was um, a park, like a woodland, just outside. This is Pacific Grove in, in California, and there used to be a beautiful park. And every year at the same time, hundreds of thousands of monarch butterflies used to settle and it just used to be this magical place and then they would move on to warmer climes and they because they butterflies can't fly when it's cold so it's all about timing yeah it's funny that isn't it there and um and then they they flew away and uh, they always come back and they always fly away again 
and they they fly like two and a half thousand miles these butterflies right but it has to be warm or they can't fly <laughs> interesting but i'm no expert i only looked it up but that i remember that from when we lived in mont in montreal in pacific grove right let's have a look so we've done we've done that one now we're going to do this one up here there we go now the other thing i want to tell you about is the retreat the spa retreat we've got um we've got the green light to um hopefully all things being equal and covid permitting to run the spa groovy retreat parchment retreat um in october so we're putting our feelers out because it's pretty much sold out the 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 first two days so we're putting our feelers out if there's any interest for the set for a second set of two days so the, the dates paul will give you the dates he'll write them down um and and if you're if you the thing now is to register your interest with this the third and fourth day because we want to act quickly we're ahead of the curve when it comes to this so we, the hotel has got loads of rooms available which is what you want when you when you're doing a retreat you want to be able to all hang out together don't you right so that's that one see so you've no, I went a bit too far over on this. Look, that looks like rubbish. Right, I'm going to have to do that one again. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of that, because otherwise it looks like there's an echo going on there. Um, I folded the paper wrong. It's all about the fold. But Paul will give you the details about the spa retreat. And if you are interested in coming, I mean, crikey, by October, we should be safe, shouldn't we? We should be able to gather together and hang out together. I think it would just be a fantastic. I know Linda and I are looking forward to it. And Josie and Hazel and, you know, we're just going to hang out at the spa hotel and, and run this beautiful retreat that we do every year. But we just thought it could be. Right, hang on a minute. I've got that one. Let me just get this in the right fold place. Um, we just thought it'd be a fantastic opportunity if you want to get out and have a little mini break, meet your mates. If you're into your groovy, let me see if this is better now. If you're into your groovy, that's more like it, and parchment, and you want to hone your skills and have a little mini holiday, the Spa Hotel in Tunbridge Wells is pretty spectacular. They've been refurbishing it as well during lockdown. See, we were going to do in April, but we can't even... The hotel's not even allowed to open until May, so that sorts that out. Right, doesn't that look cool? So we've done our three butterflies. We've got three completely different shapes. Yes. And then on, on, um, on Friday, when we get together... What we need to do is transfer these. What's the time? It can't be 11 o'clock already. It blimmin' is. Yikes. Um, we'll, we'll transfer these. So that will give you a chance to get your shapes perfect, right? Get your shapes right. Flip them. Get the, tran get the reflection. And then on, um, on Friday, we'll transfer them and we'll start colouring them. So that's going to be a really nice, a really nice thing to do. So on Friday when we get together, we just need our pergolina watercolour pencils, the water brushes or a paintbrush. You need something to colour, don't you? And, and, and I want to get that translucent feeling, this loveliness, this stuff, right? This kind of what we did here, look, that kind of translucency. I think we'll be able to get a fantastic result with this. And um, yeah, and on the subject of Mother's Day, Mother's Day, there is a, another, don't, don't forget, I, you remember I said on Monday about the floral alphabet stamps and groovy that I, um, that I'd illustrated ages ago, I put a really good offer on them, so if, Paul will give you the link on that as well, you know, because I was thinking, like you send a bunch of flowers, right, this is, call this a hard sell if you like, but it makes sense to me, if I'm a stamper, right, it, these are stamps, these floral alphabet stamps, they will last forever. They're never going to go off, same as the groovy plates. I send a bunch of flowers to my mum. It's 50 pound, you know, it's 50 quid for a bunch of flowers. A week later, they're gone. They're, 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 that's it, disappeared. So for three bunches of flowers, you've got forever flowers. That's the way I look at it. 
And I thought, what a, you know, if you, if you, if you're a stamper or a groovy person, these are such beautiful images. You should look at them, check them out. It's so much floral, you know, remember what I said at the beginning of the hour, flowers and butterflies. And the recipients, the recipients really, the people that you make the cards for and you make the art for, they dictate that. The same as our, our crafters, they dictate that that's what we primarily do. Flowers, butterflies, and then trees, hence the reflections. And we know that they'll be popular. So, because they always are those things. And hearts, hearts. So there you are. And what have we been doing for the last fortnight? Hearts. Now we're doing flowers and butterflies, see? And that's our comfortable zone, isn't it, as crafters? It's cool, it's all right, you know. So there we are, loads of, uh, loads of bits to think about. And, uh, and I will see you on, on Friday again at 10 o'clock and we'll get to grips with those beautiful butterflies. And um, thank you, Paul, for your help. And thank you all for joining me. Please stay safe. Stay safe, stay warm, enjoy your art, you know, and, uh, and everything will be okay. It will all be well. We just got to be patient and keep smiling. All right. Lots of love to you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.